Hi, this is Dr. A. This is a quick uh, intro on acid-base theory as a review for clinical chemistry. So let's review acid-base theory. So acid-base, um, so acids are substances that can yield a hydrogen ion. Bases are substances that can yield a hydroxide ion. And acid-base balance is the body's physiological response to changes in hydrogen ion concentration. Uh, the normal concentration of hydrogen ions in extracellular body fluid, fluid ranges from 36 to 44 uh, nanomoles per liter, but the body produces much greater quantities of hydrogen ions through very, uh, various like metabolic processes. pH uh, is defined as a negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and so the pH measurement in hydrogen uh, ion concentration um, are in opposite relationship that when one goes up the other goes down so a high pH has a low hydrogen ion concentration a low pH has a high hydrogen ion concentration so it's an inverse relationship the accepted reference range for arterial pH is 7.35 to 7.45 so your ideal neutral body pH is 7.4 which um, sometimes can be confusing because if you've you know studied regular regular chemistry uh, seven is neutral, anything uh, on the pH from 0 to 7 is acidic, and anything from 7 to 14 is alkaline um, or base. Uh, but for the body, we have to move that neutral from 7 to 7.4 and give it a little bit of a little bit of a buffer area. So there's 7.35 to 7.45. So that's normal physiologic pH for the for the blood and for the body. And so therefore um, a person would be in acidosis if they have a pH level that is below 7.34 and would be in alkalosis if they have a pH level that is above the reference range or above is 7.44. So uh, buffers are really important in acid-base balance. So the buffer systems are the body's first line of defense against extreme changes in hydrogen ion concentration uh, and they, they buffer those so that you don't have extreme changes in pH. Those are really important because a lot of your enzymatic reactions are pH dependent. The buffers are combinations of weak acids or weak bases and their salts, and they function to resist changes in pH by neutralizing acids or bases. So they'll neutralize whatever's in excess. The bicarbonate carbonic acid system has a low buffering capacity, but it is an important buffer system for three reasons. The carbonic acid can separate into carbon dioxide and water, allow, allowing the carbon dioxide to be eliminated by the lungs and the uh, hydrogen to be eliminated as water. The changes in carbon monoxide will modify ventilation or respiration rate. Um, and so the as your CO2 climbs, your breathing will increase. Um, the bicarb concentration can be altered by the kidneys. And so um, of all the, there's four different buffer system. So as mentioned, the bicarbonate carbonic acid buffer system is the most important. And uh, the first one we're gonna start with. So it is controlled by both the lungs and the kidneys. So uh, here's um, carbonic anhydrase as the enzyme and it will convert. Uh, so you can start here in the reaction. So CO2 and water and it's going to convert it to carbonic acid. This is carbonic acid here, which then can dissociate into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. And so even though the system has a low buffering capacity, the CO2 can be retained or released by the lungs and the bicarb can be increased or decreased by the kidney. So when we look at this equation, if you will, this end, the bicarb end is the metabolic end, and this is the end controlled by the kidneys. This end is the respiratory end with the CO2, and this end that's controlled by the lungs. The other buff buffer systems are the phosphate buffer system. Uh, it maintains acid-base balance within the cells, um, and it's the hydrogen phosphate, the monohydrogen phosphate here. Uh, and then next to that, you have the protein buffer system. And proteins are amphoteric, and so they can back, act both as weak bases and weak 
acids. So uh, they can pick up, uh, a protein can pick up a hydroxide ion or it can pick up a hydrogen ion and um, hold on to it. And so, so, and we have a lot of protein in our blood. So it is uh, by volume probably the more abundant one. And then hemoglobin in itself is a buffer system. Now, obviously, hemoglobin is a protein. So hemoglobin can sometimes is categorized underneath the protein buffer system. So, um, Therefore, because this protein is also infoteric, and so it can also pick up excess hydrogen ions or excess hydroxide ions, um, and it mainly prevents pH changes within the red cell. Um, thank you very much for your attention.